Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Leadership Biz Cafe podcast. I'm your host, Tanvi Nasir, CEO of Tanvi Nasir Leadership. Looking for a keynote speaker or corporate trainer for your next event? Then visit our company's website at tanvinasir.com to find out how we can bring in valuable insights and practical tools to help your organization succeed in achieving its goals. And this episode is sponsored by GoCo. Growing your business is exciting, but hiring and onboarding new employees can be overwhelming, not to mention costly if things go wrong. Thankfully, GoCo can help you with this by automating and streamlining everything you have to do to support your growing team. You can customize the GoCo platform to support your existing processes, documents, and policies, and they provide you with a dedicated customer success manager to help you maximize the benefits you derive from their platform. And the best part is you can try it for free with no credit card needed. So go to goco.io slash leadership, that's G-O-C-O dot I-O slash leadership to get started. And now, Let's start up the espresso machine and brew up another Leadership Espresso Shot. Of the many skills and traits that today's leaders are expected to have, effective communication is without question a critical cornerstone for successful leadership in today's interconnected digital world. Of course, when it comes to discussions on how leaders can do a better job communicating their idea or vision to those under their care, there is naturally a focus on how leaders can employ storytelling to not only articulate their vision, but how this communication tool can help motivate employees to commit their talents, creativity, and insights to making that shared purpose a reality. Granted, in this digital age of text messages, emails, video conferencing, and social media, Storytelling as a communication tool can seem a bit quaint, hearkening more to the image of people sitting around a campfire sharing stories than around a conference room trying to figure out the next steps of a new initiative or how to solve a current issue. But the fact remains that storytelling is a powerful and effective vehicle for leaders to better inform, inspire, and educate those they lead of not only the journey before them, but of the challenges that stand in their way. And the truth is, as leaders, we all have a story to tell, a narrative that says why this matters and why others should care. Something that informs those we lead of not only what we want to achieve with their support and contributions, but what they will gain in the process of taking part in this endeavor. But how can we actually do this? What steps should you take to tap into the power of storytelling to rally your employees around your vision and empower them to deliver their best to this collective goal? Well, in keeping with the topic of this Leadership Espresso Shot, I'm going to illustrate this by sharing with you the story of a fellow team member I worked with several years ago and her efforts to spearhead a new change initiative in our organization. At one of our weekly team meetings, Mary talked about a plan she had shared with the organization's senior leadership about a new change initiative. As Mary described the details of her proposal, she pointed out the various benefits it would create for the organization in the upcoming years. It was clear to everyone around the table that Mary had not only done her homework in conceptualizing this change initiative, but that she was also very passionate about her proposal. Now, Normally, when someone proposes any kind of change initiative, people tend to fall into one of three groups. One group that almost immediately loves the idea, another group that takes a more guarded wait-and-see stance, and the final group that actively resists it, either because they don't agree or because they're concerned about what unexpected issues this change will give rise to. But as I looked around at the various team members, I didn't see any supporters, naysayers, or those taking a more neutral, cautious stance. Instead, what I saw was a complete lack of interest in Mary's proposal, something that became all the more apparent when Mary asked if anyone had any questions and was met with only vague shrugs and silence. On the surface, Mary's idea wasn't overtly good or bad. So why did the other leaders around that conference table react to her change proposal with such indifference? While we might think the issue is tied specifically to the technical aspects of her change initiative, The real problem came down to how Mary communicated her plan to the rest of the group. More specifically, how she failed to use three important keys to effective storytelling that would have allowed her message and idea to better connect and resonate with those whose support she needed to get her idea off the ground. 
The first key to effective storytelling is to craft a simple, memorable message of what you're trying to achieve. As a writer, I enjoy watching movies and TV shows that create complex storylines that slowly unravel and evolve as the story progresses. When it's done right, it allows for both a deeper look inside a character's motivations, as well as creating a more rich experience as the viewer delves further into this imaginary world. Of course, the problem with complex storytelling is that it can also lead to convoluted plot lines, out-of-character moments, and outright contradictions where established limitations are conveniently overlooked because the writers ended up painting themselves into a corner. When the latter happens, it's often because writers get caught up in their own ideas that they overlook the more important aspects of storytelling, their audience, and the message they wish to leave them with. And this was the first mistake Mary made in her presentation. She was so focused on trying to demonstrate how thorough she was in preparing this proposal that she lost sight of one of the most important elements to fostering support for your goal or initiative. Your vision needs to be clear, memorable, and provide context for why we'd want to be a part of it. In other words, by trying to cover her bases to show all the different ways the organization could benefit from her plan, she not only ended up muddying her message, but she left her colleagues feeling uninspired about why they should care about helping her to push her proposal forward. That's why it's important for you to remember that when it comes to using storytelling as a communication tool in your leadership, you have to make sure you create a message that's easy to understand, memorable, and inspiring. The second key to effective storytelling is to make sure you leave empty spaces to allow others to insert themselves into your vision, plan, or change initiative. Regardless of the genre, one thing the best storytellers know is that it's critical that you create scenes that are open to some form of interpretation. In some cases, it can be in how a conversation or the end of a scene is left open to interpretation as to what will happen next. In others, it can be more subtle in how a character will react to something, not with words, but with a certain glance or look. It's a powerful vehicle for storytelling because it encourages the audience to invest themselves in the story, to put their own spin on what happened and where things will go from here. If we go back to Mary's example, we can see that one of the reasons why she got no feedback from her colleagues was because she didn't leave us any room to add something to the proposal. That all Mary really wanted was not our input and advice, but simply our approval. And that left people with little opportunity to feel a sense of ownership in the proposal, and consequently, why Mary's idea was met with little interest or enthusiasm. That's why when it comes to motivating your employees to not only support, but champion your vision, your long-term goal, or your change initiative in your organization, it's important to remember to not confuse creating clarity with removing spaces for people to speak their minds. And the third key to effective storytelling is to make sure that you create near-term goals framed within your long-term vision. One of the things every writer knows is that if you're going to retain your audience over the long run, you need to create some form of a hook, something that's going to motivate people to stay invested into tuning into your show every week, to picking up and finishing your book, or to reading the latest entry on your leadership blog. Part of that hook requires that while we create this notion of a big payoff in the long run of sticking with it, there is also some tangible benefit the audience gets in the here and now, something that reminds them of why they're invested today and why they should continue tuning in as things move forward. This balancing act requires that we look not only down the long view towards what we hope to achieve over the long run, but also what we gain in the near term. And this is probably the most significant piece missing from Mary's proposal. All of the benefits she inferred we could attain through her change initiative were set years in the future. She didn't provide or demonstrate how her proposal would help her colleagues with the issues and challenges they faced today and will face in the months ahead. And this is how those who succeed at leadership are able to sustain their employees' drive to deliver their best over and over again. They recognize that you can't simply talk about the better tomorrow that your vision might give rise to. You also have to inform and demonstrate how it will help improve the way your employees live and function today. 
In the end, Mary's proposal garnered some interest from the organization's senior management, but that was about as far as it went, no doubt because there was little interest and support demonstrated by the other team members. And eventually, Mary's plan fell by the wayside as other issues presented themselves alongside our day-to-day objectives. Now, I'm sure Mary's situation sounds familiar as you've probably experienced something similar over the course of your career, which is why I felt like Mary's story would be a good way to illustrate not only why storytelling is so critical to get our message and idea across, but also how simple it can be for you to incorporate these three keys of storytelling and how you communicate your vision or long-term goals to your team and employees. Again, as I said at the beginning of this episode, all of us have a story to share, a story that provides the context for why this vision, this goal, or this change initiative you're presenting to your team is important, why it's necessary, and why it should matter to those under your care. There's a reason why speeches like Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream of an end to racial segregation in the U.S., President John F. Kennedy's vision of landing a man on the moon in 10 years, and Winston Churchill's calls for courage in the face of the ravages of war continue to be shared and quoted decades after they were spoken because they serve as timeless examples of how today's leaders can rally those they lead around a common vision or shared purpose. Though the challenges they discuss are now a part of our collective past, we are nonetheless drawn to the emotion and to the power of the ideas being expressed, of how we can not only meet the challenges we face head-on, but how we can overcome them as well. That's not to say that we need to attain the level of storytelling mastery these renowned leaders had attained for us to become effective leadership communicators in our organization. Rather, The idea that I want you to take from this is that all of us have the potential to inspire others about that better, brighter future we can create together by sharing our story. Of connecting the hardships we've endured, the challenges we've risen above, and the successes we've achieved in order to create our collective story. Of why we do what we do, and why it matters. Indeed, it's that sense of commonality and community of feeling like we are in fact a part of something bigger than ourselves that inspires us to not only deliver our best, but to aim to become that better version of who we are. And that brings us to the end of another cup of Leadership Espresso Shot. And that brings us to a close on this episode of Leadership Biz Cafe, brought to you by Tanvir Nasir Leadership. Looking for a keynote speaker or corporate trainer for your next event? Then visit our company's website at tanvirnasir.com to find out how we can bring these kinds of insights to your organization, either at an upcoming conference, leadership retreat, or for a corporate trading event. And this episode has been sponsored by GoCo. Hiring and onboarding new employees can be time-consuming and tedious. But thanks to GoCo, you can streamline and automate this process to help your employees hit the ground running. And as it can be customized to your workflow, it'll not only help you save time, but avoid any costly mistakes involved in onboarding and employee management. And remember, the best part is you can try GoCo for free with no expiration date and no credit card needed. So go to goco.io slash leadership, that's G-O-C-O dot I-O slash leadership, and discover how GoCo can help improve your onboarding and employee management processes. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please drop me a note through the contact form on my website. And if you enjoyed this episode, please do share it with a colleague, with your team, or even with your boss to allow them to reap the benefits as well. And remember, you can find all episodes of this show as well as links to subscribe on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher Radio on our podcast page at tavernasir.com slash LBC. So if you want to share this podcast with others, that's a great way to do it. And with that, I'm Tavernasir, and you've been listening to Leadership Biz Cafe. Leadership Biz Cafe.